today we're going to talk about the five different types. Actually, we only going to focus on four because the fifth one was co-ops. And most people don't really live in co-ops like that. So we're going to focus on the four different types of homes that are out there um, that'll help you determine which home is best for you. Um, so the first one is what most people are familiar with, which is a single family home. You might see SFH um, as you're searching. Um, this is the most common home that you'll find in almost every city in the U.S. Um, it's usually a standalone home that may or may not have HOA fees, which are um, homeowners association fees, um, but some do. The home in the community that I live in is technically a single family home and I pay a HOA fee, but it's very, very low um, compared to some of the other ones that I saw. Um, but yeah, the kind of the benefits for this is that it's attractive to both buyers and sellers. It's easy to get a contract locked in and it's easier to get it sold because it's kind of a standalone. Um, so usually you can kind of do what you want on your land. You don't have to kind of go through anyone um, unless there is an HOA fee involved. Usually like when it's yours, it's yours. So if you want to ex expand, add something to the back, if you want to do whatever, like completely gut it out and rebuild it, like you can usually do that with a single family home. Um, and it is the most common, you know? So as far as like, you know, selling and buying, like it's, it's just one of the most popular ones out there. I'm sure you've heard of it. So if you do want that land, you want that privacy, um, as I mentioned in a former video, I live in Texas, there's tons of land out here. So, you know, I've been to people's homes that, you know, have, you know, one to two miles in between the next one. That's not my story. I'm, I, that ain't my story, but I have seen homes like that. And it's actually pretty cool, um, to have this whole land be yours. So if you don't want your neighbors all in your business, you know, and you want to have some space, you know, then a single family home is definitely the most popular and the one that you should go after. The second type of very popular home is a town home. Um, so this is usually a home that's attached to another home and you usually share a wall on each side. So these are popular, um, like in in the Northeast, you you know, think of it like a brownstone. If you live in New York, um, think of it as like row houses. Like that's kind of like similar to a town home, if you can envision that. Um, again, you share the walls with your neighbors. Um, it usually always includes an HOA. Um, again, that's homeowners association. Um, and they handle, that HOA covers sort of the upkeep. So. Usually, you know, again, this is different for each community, um, but if it snows, like they'll plow the snow, you know, they'll kind of be responsible for the common ground. So if there's like a park or, you know, a, a, a lake, a lagoon, like they'll be responsible. You're, you are paying that to keep it clean um, and to pay them to clean it up essentially. So these are, again, the common areas. Um, if there's like a gym or a pool, usually that's included as well. But one thing to keep in mind with that is the higher your HOA fee is, the higher your monthly payment's gonna be. So you wanna make sure that if you have something in mind and your mortgage is 1200 and your HOA is about 300, that's already 15. We haven't discussed taxes. We haven't discussed insurance or any other fees associated with owning your home. So that's just something you want to keep in mind of. But I know a lot of people like them because it is low maintenance. Um, you know, the con is that you are sharing the walls with, you know, your neighbors. But depending on how the home is built, you more than likely won't hear that. Like I've lived in townhomes before and it was okay. Um, and it's usually like multi-level, like you still get the same amount of space. It's just structured a little differently from a single family. Um, the next popular home is a um, condo, a condominium, which is very similar to an apartment, basically. Like you own the inside of your unit, you know? You can do, well, actually you can, I shouldn't say that. Usually there are still regulations on, on what you can do. I've also lived in a condo um, and, you know, the person who was owning it at the time had to go through her um, condo association to essentially like change the color of her wall. You know, like though she owned this home, like there's so many more rules that are added because this is a for real shared space, like the hallway, the gym, the pool, the elevator, like everybody is using this common space. So they want it to look cohesive. They want it to look the same across the board. Um, but usually you have a little more control of what you do within your four walls. But before you make any major 
renovations or improvements, you need to make sure you run that by your HOA and or your condo association because you can definitely be fined um, and we don't want you to get kicked out of your house. Like that's just not a good situation. But this is usually best for people that like the city life because usually condos are like in the city. So if you, you know, are a fresh college grad or you just prefer to have everything handled, you know, and walk downstairs to the grocery store or something like that, then, then a condo is a good suggestion for you. When I started off on my journey, look at my shirt, black, brilliant, billionaire in the making. Um, I wanted to do a condo. I wanted it to be more townhome condo-y because a townhome can still be a condo, which is very confusing as a home buyer, <laughs> but you'll be able to know by reading the MLS and obviously your agent, lean on them. Like my agent, because I wanted to start off with a condo, she was like, mm -mm. the condo fees are gonna be too expensive. It's gonna up the price of your monthly payment. So even if the mortgage is five, 600, the condo fee could potentially be match that. You know, it could be 300, 400, 500, and you don't wanna be paying that because there's always an opportunity for it to increase. And we don't want that. So like my HOA, Again, though I'm not in a condo, I'm not in a townhome, my home is technically taxed as a single family, is less than $100. So I know it's eventually probably gonna go up, but I'm comfortable with that. So you have to realize and think about what's comfortable for you and your lifestyle. Um, for me, I like the, the freedom um, and I like the flexibility that I can add whatever I want to my house because it's a single family. Um, obviously there are certain permits and stuff you gotta get. I'm not making anything drastic. I'm in a new home new build so but that's just something you want to think about and lastly is uh, a multi-unit so a multi-unit home will be like a duplex triplex fourplex um usually it's 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 one plot of land that has multiple units on it so these are popular in you know dense cities uh like san francisco potentially new york dc like where space is limited and usually again you're sharing one lot you know um that has multiple units so that's personally what i wish i would have bought um but i live in texas and texas is a, a single family heaven essentially for the people because there's so much land and people don't want to live next door to people like that for real for real and if they do they would rather be in an apartment because the apartments out here are very luxurious um so yeah, that would have been the one that I opted for, but it just didn't make sense for the locale that I was in, the locale that I am in. Um, but again, if you if you are in one of these, you know, more dense areas where it's heavily populated and land is limited, and you know that there are tons of duplexes, triplexes, you know, if you're a first time home buyer, consider those, you know, because essentially it's having a tenant, which can be very scary. You know, but there's also property managers out there. Like, you don't have to go about this on your own, but you, you want to make sure it's something you really want to do. But the biggest pro is that, you know, somebody's paying a good chunk, if not all of your mortgage, while you live on the other side, if it's a duplex, or you live in one of the units, if it's a triplex or a fourplex. And then you are essentially an investor and a homeowner at the same time. Like, I'm. I'm an investor, but I don't get to reap the benefits of investing, you know, of cash flowing, you know, properties just yet, not with, with this house yet, at least, um, with other things that I have going on, yes, but that's what you get as a multi-unit homeowner. You're an investor and a homeowner, and you get to cash flow, you know, off the property that you own. Like, one property is paying your mortgage, you know, one tenant, I'm sorry, is paying your mortgage. Uh, that can be very scary, again, and you usually have to put down a little bit more because it's more land. Well, it's not always more land, but it might be a little bit more that you have to put down. But, you know, as a first time home buyer, you can put down as little as 3% according to whatever your financial blueprint is if you do conventional. And then, you know, if you decide to do FHA, it could be as little as 3.5. Again, this is dependent on your unique financial situation. If you have not so great credit, you know, if your debt is really high, then that might not be the guarantee. But this is something you want to talk to your lender and your agent about because they can help you determine what's the best route for you. But that's just the recap. You know, there are single family homes, 
Great for people that want full flexibility over what they do with their space, want privacy. There are um, townhomes which share the walls, you know, with your neighbors. Um, but the upkeep of the community is usually paid through an HOA. Um, there's condos which are structured similar to apartments um, where you kind of just own the inside of your four walls. Um, a little more regulation, but a less, a lot less upkeep. Um, you don't have any land or yard stuff to handle. Like that stuff we have to deal with as single family um, homeowners, but as a condo owner, you do not. Um, but you do want to make sure that you think of the condo fees because they can be very pricey and they can up your monthly payment. Um, and again, we haven't even touched on insurance and taxes. And then lastly is a multi-unit, which will be like the duplexes, the triplexes, the fourplexes. Usually it's more than one like livable unit on one piece of land. Um, again, a great advantage of that is that someone else is going to be paying most, if not all, of your mortgage while you can use your money for other things. Um, the con is that you will be a landlord. So having a tenant and being responsible, you know, to make sure that they pay their rent and all that stuff can be overwhelming, but that's what property managers are for. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, please let me know if you have any questions about these different home types that we discussed. And I will see you guys on the next video. Shout out to my shirt, Black Brilliant Billionaire in the Making. I will leave the link in the description to where I got this shirt because I've had it for a couple of years and it still is in really good quality. Um, and it's Black History Month. Support Black businesses all year, not just everywhere. Bye. <laughs>